maker meeting. There's just a, a bunch of incredible, cool projects here. And what I'm going to talk about is how we manufacture hardware and small projects in very small batches. Uh, I'm sorry, it's going to be in English, uh, but I do have a Japanese resource here. So we will try to answer questions in English and Japanese at the end. Uh, so, we go forward. I'm from DangerousPrototypes.com. We make a new open source hardware project every month. Uh, our projects are available from a shop in China, and they make very small batches. Compared to many people who make thousands or tens of thousands, we make 100 to 500, so very small. I got my start, just like everyone out here, making small projects, putting them on the internet, sharing them with my friends. So first, uh, just in case, I want to let you know what open source hardware is. That's hardware where you put the files for your electronics projects on the internet and share them with other people. Generally, we use an open source license, and that just means that other people can take your work and use it themselves. And some common examples you might know are Creative Commons or the GPL, that's usually used for software. So why do we manufacture open hardware? Well, really it's all about sharing. There's really skilled people here who do soldering, who etch circuit boards, and do all this hard stuff. That takes skill, and not everyone can do that, but lots of people want open source hardware. So manufacturing is how we share it with the other people. So I'm going to first talk about how we make open source hardware, or how open source hardware is currently manufactured. Uh, I identified four ways. They vary in the amount of money you make, but also the amount of time you spend. The first way is licensing, and this is really the absolute easiest way. A company like SparkFun or Adafruit in the US, you may be familiar with them, they approach projects they see on the internet and offer to manufacture them, and they'll share their profit with you. I found of the four or five people I've talked to, it's generally 10% of their profit is what you get. They take care of everything. All you do is support users and uh, collect your royalties. The problem with this is only the absolute top designs get chosen. Not everybody can go this route to make their hardware. Next is fulfillment, and this is what Dangerous Prototypes is doing with Seed Studio in China. We design hardware, and we support our users, and they take care of everything else. They manufacture the hardware, sell it from their shop, handle returns and repairs, things like that. Uh, I really like Sorry, I, I really like the fulfillment process because what I like to do is make hardware and design electronics. I don't like to spend my time filling orders, mailing things, that kind of stuff. And a fulfillment house lets me concentrate on design. Contract manufacturing is the way most electronics are made. If you have a cell phone or an iPad or an Xbox, uh, Microsoft doesn't build the Xbox themselves. They send it to an assembly line in China or somewhere where people put the things on the boards. Uh, usually they send all the parts to them and get assembled things back. Here though, there's a lot more involved for you. You take all the risk, you get all the parts together, and you're in charge of just about everything, selling, wholesale, returns, etc. Finally, is do-it-yourself assembly. And there's really two ways this is happening. If you're doing small projects and you're only making or selling a few of them, you can do it by hand. You can make a kit, you can assemble hardware and solder it by hand and sell it. If you're doing more, you can buy the machine, the robot, that builds circuit boards called a pick and place. And the pick and place uh, is how Adafruit and SparkFun manufacture their hardware. At these type of events, I've talked to dozens of people who have bought a pick and place machine and they want to start a manufacturing operation in their garage or home. And in 
inevitably it takes so much time and skill to learn the machine that very few people are successful. So I recommend you avoid buying a pick and place machine until you're as big as Adafruit or SparkFun or a giant manufacturer. There's a lot of work involved. Next one please. Okay, now we've talked about the four ways hardware is manufactured. I'm going to talk about what we actually send to the company to have our boards made. Oh, that's fine. Um, so we'll talk about these materials that we actually send off to the manufacturer that they use to build the board. First are board files and Gerbers. So the board files actually contain your circuit board and show where the parts go and what the values are. We use CADSoft Eagle, which is a free program. I know lots of people are using it now. Uh, and then Gerber files, next one please. The Gerber files are a standard format. You can send Gerber files to any PCB manufacturer in the world, and they will be able to take your board and manufacture it and send it back to you. So Gerber files are just a standard. And once you export them, they look something like this. You can see the different layers for the solder and the silk screen and the board. Okay. Next we have a list of parts. This is the stuff that actually goes on the board. We call it a BOM, or a Bill of Materials. Next one, please. Okay. It has things like capacitors, resistors, crystals, chips, things like that. And we include the values that need to go on there, the number of them, and the size. Things like 0603 is a certain size of capacitor or resistor. We try to use a very standard stock of parts. We stick to very common things that every manufacturer carries. That helps us prevent shortages and production delays and general problems that we have with manufacturing. Firmware and software. This is anything the manufacturer needs to put into your design. If there's a chip, the manufacturer needs to know how to program it, have a tool to program it, uh, and the software to put into it. Next please. A test plan is something a lot of people don't think of until the end. But you have a manufacturer who doesn't know anything about your hardware at all. And they need a way to make sure it actually works when it leaves the factory. And that's what a test plan is for. It should be quick and easy. It should be something unskilled labor can do in the factory with very little training. And it should be as automated as possible. I recommend you think about it early because if you wait until the end, it's very difficult to design testing into the hardware. But if you think about it from the beginning, you can include some extra connections, some extra things to measure and make sure your board is working correctly. Also generally, you need a golden sample or a prototype. This is an example piece of hardware that you send to the manufacturer so they know what it's actually supposed to look like. Something else that, as a geek, I never think of is how to sell my products. And copy are the words and pictures and text that people see that make them want your stuff. And this takes considerable you know, work and skill, and obviously advertisers craft these, but if you're doing it small, you have to do it yourself. My approach is to use as many facts as I can. What would someone like me need to know to know if this board was what I wanted, if I wanted to buy that? And also many people recommend good action pictures. If you can show someone using your board and how to use it, then they instantly know this is what it's for. So that's actually the end of the presentation. The main points were how hardware is made through licensing, fulfillment, contract manufacturing, or doing it yourself, and also the materials you need to have a project manufactured. And I'll take questions, and we'll do our best to do Japanese and English as much as possible.